Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing antidepressants. Specifically, we're going to be discussing tricyclic and antidepressants and monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Now, if you guys don't know, we've already discussed SSRIs and SNRIs in our previous lectures. So you can find those lectures on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com forward slash madmedicine. And there you can find playlists for step one, psychology and pharmacology, where the SSRI uh, antidepressant lectures are held. So with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And let's begin the discussion about uh, depression because it's really important to have an understanding of what you're using these drugs for. Usually these are used for depression. So depression, aka the big sad, is a mental health disorder where uh, patients have persistently depressed mood and last lack of interest, and it usually leads to significant impairment in their day-to-day -day function. Now this can be caused by many different uh, reasons, many different factors like genetic, environmental, biologic, and psychological factors, and it's associated with a decreased level of serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. And these main uh, neurotransmitters are the targets for the drugs that we use, right? And what we want to do is lead to an increase in uh, concentration and increase in, uh, in the amount uh, of these drugs, so uh, of these neurotransmitters with the drugs. Now, the treatment for depression is going to be cognitive behavioral therapy and antidepressants, which are SSRIs, SNRIs, tricyclic antidepressants, monoamine oxidases, uh, inhibitors, sorry, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, uh, and atypical antidepressants. All right, in this video, we're going to be discussing TCAs and MAOIs. This would be an A, this should be an O. I wrote that wrong, that's a typo, my bad. Uh, but in our previous lecture, we've already talked about these two drugs, classes, SSRIs, SNRIs. And in the next lecture, we're gonna be talking about atypical antidepressants. All right, so let's discuss tricyclic antidepressants. TCAs, aka tricyclic antidepressants, are not the first line uh, treatment for depression. It's usually second line. These are no longer used as they used to be since now we have SSRIs and SNRIs, which are very, very, uh, which are usually beneficial for patients. Now, the certain types of uh, TCAs that you need to know are going to be uh, amitriptyline, nortriptyline, imipramine, desipramine, clomipramine, uh, doxepin and amoxapine. Now, you can definitely try to memorize these based off of the suffix, right? So the triptyline, that always gave me a clue that this is a TCA, okay? So let's just write this down. Triptyline, okay? Uh, the ipramine also, let's write the ipramine. And then the last two that never really conformed to this suffix rule was doxepin and amoxapine. Uh, I highly just recommend you guys memorize these because when it comes to psychiatry for the step one, in my opinion, the two hardest things is going to be remembering the timeline of when uh, certain diseases occur for the diagnostic criteria. And we've been you know hammering that in for you guys so you guys remember it. And also... Uh, the names of the drugs in certain drug classes because a lot of times they overlap and it makes it difficult for you to remember, oh, is this a tricyclic, is this an SSRI, et cetera, et cetera. So try to just sit down and memorize these drugs the best that you can so you don't get thrown off on uh, the questions you see. Now, tricyclic antidepressants function very similar to SNRIs because they inhibit the reuptake of uh, uh, serotonin, 5-hydroxytryptamine, and norepinephrine in the synapses, which leads to an increased amount of these, nor uh, these neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft, right? So this is going to be very similar to an SNRI, very, very similar. Now, these are also used in many disorders like major depressive disorder, general anxiety disorder, peripheral neuropathy, chronic pain, migraine prophylaxis, and the two that you should know that you know can pop up is going to be OCD, especially clomipramine is used for OCD, and inuresis, aka bedwetting, which is uh, imipramine is used for that drug. So try to commit this to memory because if you see uh, a question with these two drugs talking about OCD or enuresis, you should know which drug to uh, choose respectively. Now, uh, when it comes to tricyclic antidepressants, the chemical structure is pretty important because it will tell you uh, what type of TCA it is, and also it'll also tell you what the main uh, effect it has 
on these drugs. So let's talk about the very first uh, um, chemical structure, which is going to be a secondary amine. Secondary amines have two nitrogenous attachments. So look at the secondary amine right here. This is a TCA. They're called tricyclic antidepressants because you have one, two, and three cyclical rings. All right. And then when you look at the last amine right here, it has one, two R groups attached to it, right? This makes it a secondary amine. Now, secondary amines are uh, relatively, uh, they have activating effects like norepinephrine-like effects. And the reason why they have norepinephrine-like effects is because secondary amines are relatively selective for norepinephrine rather than 5-HT, okay, rather than uh, 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 serotonin. They, they favor more so norepinephrine. Then, after secondary amines, you have something called tertiary amines, which have three nitrogenous attachments. Okay, like this right here, you have this nitrogen group, and you have one, two, three R groups attached to it. So you have a tertiary amine, and these have more so sedating effects, like antihistaminergic effects, and uh, that's because they favor norepinephrine equally to serotonin. So that is a key distinction Distinction you should be aware of when it comes to TCA. Now, when it uh, comes to their side effects and overdosing, you need to know what happens. And uh, TCA side effects are very, very broad spectrum because they have multiple effects on the body. So the very first side effect that kind of happens with a lot of the antidepressants is going to be serotonin syndrome. This is a psychiatric emergency, keep that in mind, and this is usually due to an increased amount of serotonin that's happening, that's that's being left in the synaptic cleft or throughout the body, especially um, if someone presents with a carcinoid tumor and is also taking serotonin reuptake inhibitors or um, uh, TCAs, it can lead to serotonin syndrome. Now, other than serotonin syndrome, they have three other main side effects you should definitely know because uh, toxicity and overdosing on TCAs usually present uh, on those vignettes with these main side effects. So the first uh, side effect is going to be the antihistamine effect, right? Especially with the tertiary amines. So tertiary amines mainly have this side effect, and the patient is going to present with sedation, weight gain, and confusion, especially in the early patients because they're more they're more uh, uh, perceptive to confusion. Now that's what you're going to see in the antihistamine effects. You're also going to see anticholinergic, aka anti-muscarinic effects. Okay, so what's going to end up happening is they're going to have classic signs of anti-muscarinic, uh, sorry, anticholinergic effects, which are going to be blurry vision, constipation, dry mouth, and urinary retention. And of, often this is the kicker. Okay, on step one, they're going to give you these effects. So if they're complaining of constipation, dry mouth, and they can't pee, then definitely they're having anticholinergic effects, which should clue you more so into tricyclic antidepressants. And then finally, the last la uh, side effect that you need to know is that they have alpha-1 blocking effects, which is going to present with orthostatic hypo hypotension. So if someone is presenting with um, uh, blurry vision, constipation, they can't pee, and when they stand up, they become they fainted once or twice, you should think about TCA side effects. Now, when it comes to an overdose, right, uh, TCAs can present with seizures. TCA overdose can present with seizures because they have GABA antagonistic effects. You'll also see the anticholinergic muscarinic effects that we've been talking about. Excuse me. You'll see those effects like uh, hyperthermia, flushing, meiosis, and ileus. Ileus is just uh, lack of bowel movement. Uh, alpha-1 blockade effects will occur, and that can lead to hypotension, a.k.a death, so we're going to connect these two for you, you can have prolonged QT intervals, uh, which can lead to arrhythmias, and uh, they can. this is because TCAs can block cardiac sodium channels, leading to the prolonged QT interval. And then finally, the treatment for a TCA overdose, and this is very important, so commit this to memory, the treatment is going to be sodium bicarbonate, okay, sodium bicarbonate. Because the extra sodium is going to overcome the TCA cardiac blockade of the sodium channel. So if you're giving them sodium uh, bicarbonate, they're going to have an increased amount of sodium 
right, which is going to be able to overwhelm the TCA in order to bind to the cardiac sodium channels and lead to normal cardiac activity. Now, an easy way to remember all of these, an easy way is with the acronym tricyclic. Okay, how many C's are in tricyclic? Uh, three C's. So three C's for the side effects are going to be convulsions, a.k.a. seizures, right? You're going to have coma, a.k.a. the hypotension and the death. And then you're going to have cardiotoxicity, the, uh, the prolonged QT. So those are uh, the main side effects and overdosing uh, presentations you need to know for step one. It's very important you guys understand TCAs, especially their names and uh, which drugs are TCAs. And with that, we're going to move on and we're going to talk about monoamine oxidase inhibitors, MAOIs. Okay, so these are going to be drugs like uh, tran tranilcypramine. Sorry, I always mess this drug up. Uh, tranilcypramine, phenylzine, isocarbazid, and selegiline, or selegiline, however you pronounce that. This is a selective monoamine B inhibitor. And we're going to talk about that in a second, what that really means. Now, what monoamine oxidases do is that they inhibit the breakdown of monoamines. So what are monoamines? Those are the drugs, or sorry, those are the neurotransmitters that are most likely affected in depression. So serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Those are all classified as monoamines, okay? Uh, and we're going to talk about why they're called monoamines right now. So if you look at these uh, 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 drug profiles or these chemical structures of these drugs, right, you see that you have one amine right here. But it is a mono or a primary amine because this nitrogenous group uh, is only bound to one R group and then it's bound to two hydrogens, right? And that's across the board for all three, uh, serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Now, when it comes to inhibiting the breakdown of monoamines, you're going to have an increased amount of monoamine levels in the synaptic cleft. So at the end of the day, the end uh, product is the same, whether you're using SSRIs, SNRIs, monoamine oxidases, or tricyclic antidepressants. The difference is in uh, the rest of the antidepressant groups, you're going to have decrease in the reuptake, okay? Including in uh, tricyclic antidepressants, you're decreasing the reuptake of norepinephrine and uh, serotonin. And uh, in SSRIs, you're only reup blocking the reuptake of SSRIs, or serotonin, sorry. But with monoamine, you're not blocking the reuptake, you're blocking the breakdown. You're inhibiting the uh, monoamine oxidase, which oxidizes these monoamines and uh, inactivates them. So these are used in many disorders also, but mainly now they're used for atypical uh, depression. They're used for anxiety as well as Parkinson's disease. And the selective drug you're going to use is selegiline or selegiline, however you pronounce that drug. I, I never get it right. I always get that one wrong. Anyways, um, and we're going to talk about that right now. So when it comes to monoamines, you have two types of monoamines, right? Uh, we talked about the TCAs. You have two types of tricyclic antidepressant drugs, right? The secondary and the tertiary amine groups. But when it comes to monoamines, the actual enzyme that breaks down uh, that breaks down serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine, you have two types. So the first type is monoamine A. This is going to break down dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine, right? This is the most uh, non-selective uh, enzyme. It's going to cause a uh, decrease in all three of these neurotransmitters. And then you have monoamine B. Monoamine B is only going to break down dopamine. That's, that's the main reason why the main reason why we give selegiline, selegiline, which is a selective monoamine B inhibitor, to patients who have Parkinson's disease because patients in Parkinson's disease have low levels of dopamine and you want to increase their levels of dopamine and the way you can do that is by giving selegiline which is a monoamine B inhibitor and by inhibiting monoamine B you are inhibiting the breakdown of only dopamine leading to increased levels of dopamine in the synaptic cleft. And that is why you need to know the difference between monoamine A and monoamine B. Now, this is very simple. You literally just need to memorize legiline or selegiline, whatever, uh, as monoamine B and the rest of these drugs, uh, tranolcipramine, phenylzine, and isocarbazid as monoamine A oxidase inhibitors. So, 
When it comes to mono memes, uh, one thing you need to be aware of is, some, is something called a hypertensive crisis. Now, this can occur with monoamine oxidase inhibitors more so than any other drug uh, that we're talking about that we've talked about as a antidepressant. The reason why uh, is because of the function of the drug itself. So before we talk about that, let's talk about what a hypertensive crisis is. Hypertensive crisis is uh, is classified as a significantly elevated blood pressure with a systolic pressure greater than or equal to 180 and a diastolic pressure greater than or equal to 120. So if your blood pressure is greater than or equal to 180 over 120, this is a hypertensive crisis, aka a hypertensive emergency, because you are uh, disposing this patient to higher blood pressures than they need to, and that can lead to several, several uh, negative effects. Now, the reason why this happens is simply because of the drug that you're using. Monoamine oxidases inhibit the breakdown of monoamines, right? Serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine in the in the the presynaptic neurons, which is going to lead and lead to an increased level of these monoamines in the pre in the synaptic cleft itself. So these drugs, uh, because of their activity, are going to lead to a hypertensive crisis. Now you may be wondering, okay, how does it lead to a hypertensive crisis? Well, this will this isn't going to happen by itself, right? So if you give someone a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, an MAOI, they're not just going to instantly go into hypertensive crisis. And no, there has to be a secondary or a predisposing event that happens. And that event is uh, when someone eats uh, tyramine-rich foods with a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. So these tyramine-rich foods are going to be cheese, alcohol, cured meats, or chocolate, meaning all like the good stuff, right? Uh, so when someone is taking an MAOI and uh, they eat all these drugs or all these rich tyramine-rich foods, they're going to end up going into hypertensive crisis. And the classic scenario is often going to be a middle-aged man who presents to the clinic with difficulty breathing, a very, very uh, rapid heart rate. And when you take their blood pressure, you're going to see that they're in hypertensive crisis. And then you're going to ask them, hey, what happened? Happen. And the history, in the history, they're going to tell you, you know what, I was just eating um, a, a burger, right, a, a cheeseburger, and uh, I was drinking some alcohol, and it led me to, you know, have a hypertensive crisis, have a headache, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So why does this happen with tyramine-rich foods, right? Well, it occurs because of the actual uh, neuro or the actual chemical structure of tyramine. Tyramine is a naturally occurring monoamine. Look right here. You see this amine group? It's, a, it's attached to one R group, aka this is a monoamine, and it also has a cyclical ring structure just like all the other uh, monoamines we've been talking about. So because that uh, tyramine is a naturally occurring monoamine, it can lead to sympathetic activation. Now, normally, these rich foods that, uh, that contain tyramine are uh, metabolized in the GI tract, and the and tyramine itself gets uh, metabolized by monoamine. But because you are taking a monoamine inhibitor, because you're taking an MAOI, tyramine is not going to be metabolized. It's going to enter the bloodstream, and it's going to lead to a, an increased uh, effect of uh, all of you know the same effect that you don't want to have. Pretty much what it's going to do is it's going to lead to increased sympathetic stimulation. Now, you are already uh, increasing the sympathetic stimulation by increasing the levels of norepinephrine, dopamine, and uh, serotonin, 5-HT. Now, you're going to increase it even more with increased tyramine. And in the end, that is going to lead to an increased uh, 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 blood pressure. Sorry, it's going to lead to an increased blood pressure. And the other thing you need to understand, and this is pretty important, is that tyramine is going to displace all the other neurotransmitters. So pretty much what I want to write is tyramine is going to be more important. I'm going to make this greater than sign super thick than all other MA monoamines. Monoamines. Okay, that's the main thing. Tyramine is going to be very, very important. So what, one thing you want to watch out for when it comes to the physical presentation is going to be flame hemorrhages. Flame hemorrhages are retinal hemorrhages that are indicative of retin, a hypertensive retinopathy. Because hyper, the blood pressure is so high, the blood vessels are breaking 
simply due to the increased uh, pressure. So right here is a flame hemorrhage. As you can see, uh, everything else looks normal, but normally in uh, the retina, you don't have this red spot. And that's because this is a hemorrhage that's occurred. Now the treatment for hypertensive emergency is going to be phentolamine. Phentolamine is an alpha adrenergic blocker and uh, it's going to cause vasodilation and it's going to help in reducing the hypertension. Right? And you also want to make sure that the patient isn't continuously eating tyramine rich foods while they're taking MAOIs. So that's one thing you need to watch out for when it comes to hypertensive crisis. Now, uh, just so we can do a really quick recap. Tricyclic antidepressants are used in many, many uh, cases, just like all the other antidepressant drugs. The ones you need to watch out for is clomipramine, which is used in OCD, and imipramine, which is used for uh, enuresis. Now, TCAs are going to function very similar to, uh, they're functioning very similar to SNRIs. And in TCAs, you have secondary amines, which have two nitrogenous uh, attachments. Secondary amines are going to be more selective for norepinephrine. Tertiary amines are going to be equally selective for norepinephrine and serotonin, but they're going to have sedating effects. When it comes to TCAs, the side effects you need to watch out for are going to be antihistaminergic effects like sedation and confusion in the elderly, anticholinergic effects like blurred vision, constipation, dry mouth. This is very important because step one often presents with someone taking a TCA and having uh, anticholinergic effects, and also alpha-1 blocking effects like orthostatic, orthostatic hypotension. And when it comes to overdose, you want to watch out for the, the three Cs for TCA convulsions, aka seizures, coma due to the hypotension, and cardiotoxicity, aka the QT interval uh, blocking uh, due to the sodium channel blockade in the, the cardiac uh, myocytes. Now, you definitely want to treat TCA overdose with sodium bicarbonate. Monoamine oxidases are different than the rest of these groups. Monoamine oxidases are going to present with, uh, they're going to function, sorry, they're going to function by breaking, inhibiting the breakdown of these three, these three monoamines, norepinephrine, uh, serotonin, and dopamine. And you have two types of monoamines. You have monoamine A, which breaks down dopamine and serotonin and norepinephrine, and uh, you have monoamine B, which only breaks down dopamine. And the only drug that, that prevents monoamine B is selegiline, which is a monoamine B inhibitor. Because it breaks down, it, it prevents monoamine B, uh, it prevents the breakdown of, of dopamine, and it can be used to treat patients who have Parkinson's disease. And uh, one thing you need to watch out for in monoamines is hypertensive crisis, which occurs when someone eats tyramine-rich foods with their monoamine medication. So with that being said, uh, thank you so much for listening to this lecture. Hopefully this was beneficial for you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. If you guys don't know, uh, we also have a podcast that we post, and you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service provider. Just click, uh, just search Mad Medicine, and you will be able to find us. Thank you.